And who are you? I'm Alban, the co-founder and CEO of Sketchfab. And Sketchfab is the center of the 3D world, I call it, right? It's uh, yeah, it's a platform to publish and find 3D content on the internet. Uh, our core product is an embeddable 3D player. So you can plug in on any website, e-commerce, blog, social, uh, to add an interactive uh, 3D view of an object or a scene. And since I was last here, I don't know, two, three years ago, maybe, when did you start? We started in 2012 back in France, so it's been seven years now. Seven years. Yeah. It's like going to be an overnight success story, like yeah. all the others, right? Yeah. Well, we started, we were way too early, and the challenge was to still be here today, and here we are. Yeah. What has been happening since I was here last in terms of your stats? You know, you. You're seeing uploads of people building entire like villages now and uploading them to yeah, I mean, Sketchfab. Uh, so we recently passed two million users and three million 3D files. So we're the largest library of, of 3D files on the internet. And I mean, in terms of general trends, uh, 3D capture definitely accelerating. Like more and more people using photogrammetry software uh, or like uh, real-time 3D capture as well. And then. Um, I mean, traffic, traffic is growing. We passed a uh, billion views powered by Sketchfab. So like a free, billion? Free, yeah. I think when I was here last time, uh, I was in the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you're so on an exponential growth curve. Yeah, yeah it's nice. And it's going up uh, over time. Uh, I, yeah. And I bet the p polygon density of your models is going up over time as well, right? Um, not really, because I mean, as we've become kind of the de facto platform, uh, our core users have learned to kind of optimize their content for it, like for the browser in general. Of course, we keep improving the, the pipeline to better support larger models, but otherwise, uh, it's been mostly about educating users that a model of 100,000 polygons is going to run better than 1 million polygons, that they might as well do that if they can. And we've also uh, improved our integrations with other software, so typically on the photogrammetry side, which is really very uh, polygon intensive, like our integrations with uh, software like Reality Capture or Metashape, they automatically offer a decimation resolution that we know is going to work well for Sketchfab, and so they send us content that is ready to go. That being said, uh, we're working on a new uh, pipeline, completely separated with a long uh, R&D project, uh, funded by the French government actually, which is called uh, Massive by Sketchfab which is a pipeline that accepts uh, unlimited file size and you upload a file that can be 10 gigabytes, uh, billions of polygons, and we tile it into small tiles and we generate a uh, level of details and then we only uh, show you in the browser the part you're looking at. Wow. And we hope to, yeah, we announced it a few months ago and we'll have more news around this uh, at Seagraphs this year. Wow. So we're uh, about 22 months before I think we're going to be able to buy an Apple pair of glasses. So the the exponents, I predict, are going to keep going for your business and keep going up in uh, pretty crazy jumps every, you know, from here on, right? You survived the the, the, the desert yeah. <laughs> or the, uh, the dry period, right? And now you're going to see some really interesting things happening in the industry. That's my thinking. Does that agree with you? Uh, yes, well, I mean, I mean uh, you know, we've, we've been around for a long time, uh, seven years, and every year or every other year there is a new trend related to, to 3D. And so, you know, it started in 2012, and then in 2014 there was the VR hype, and then the 3D printing hype, sorry, uh, with MakerBot, and then 2016 the VR hype, and then 2018 the AR hype. And what we do is kind of at the crossroads of all those trends. Uh, and we try to not be too dependent on either of those trends. And so uh, while AR and uh, better AR glasses are definitely going to provide better ways to consume our content, the bulk of our uh, traffic and use cases, I mean, we have a ton of usage just on the regular web with regular free assets on yeah. regular e-commerce websites. And I mean, we'll be ready whenever we need to be ready for like, the, f the full next <laughs> Uh, computing wave of special computing, but in the, in the meantime, we're making sure to build a, a robust uh, business and platform for use cases that, that have been here for a while. Yeah, that's what people like me do. We take you two or three years into the future and try to predict what's yeah. going to go on. 
But this summer we're seeing games like Minecraft Earth and Harry Potter's uh, uh, new game from Niantic, right? That's going to bring uh, mobile AR into a new usage. And we're seeing a lot of uh, apps from 7-Eleven and Nike and all sorts of different uh, commerce companies who are turning uh, their products into 3D and starting to think in 3D, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, I guess we're playing on two levels here because as more and more brands are investing in digitizing their, their products and their catalog, more and more potentially see the need for a Sketchfab as part of their uh, needs and workflows. And then as we've reached kind of critical mass of content with 3 million free assets, we've also started uh, exposing those assets to be reusable in other projects. And so for example, we're integrated in uh, Spark AR, which is Facebook's AR platform. We power their AR library, so you can search Sketchfab within Spark AR to bring in, easily bring in assets to build. Tell me what Spark is. AR is, because several of my friends have said that's a pretty significant new new platform. Tell me what you, what it does and how, and how a user would use Sketchfab in it. And yeah. Do you agree with them that that's a pretty significant new platform? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, so Spark AR was. Uh, released by uh, Facebook a year ago um, and uh, it was pretty much mostly under the radar for a year until they opened it to Instagram and so now you need that to, to post an AR filter on Instagram which of course gives you a massive reach and so it's essentially a software it's a 3D software so it's not it's not for everyone like it's, it's a special software and then uh, to build filters and to bring in assets, of course you can bring 2D assets or videos, but then if you want to bring in 3D assets, either you can import your own or there is a Sketchfab search bar within the product. So you can search whatever you want, a, a dog, a mask, or your own assets. Typically I do a lot of uh, 3D capture and I can search my own stuff, uh, my own Sketchfab stuff from within the, the Facebook software, then bring it into their AR editing environment to uh, generate custom behaviors and triggers, and then uh, post that to the Instagram or Facebook camera. Very cool. You do a lot of 3D scanning. Uh, tell me about what you're doing with 3D scanning and, and what you're seeing others do with it. What, what, how is the usage of scanning things in 3D, like volumetric photography or, or whatnot, how is that changing, and, and how is your usage of it changing as well? Uh, yeah, so for me, um, I love 3D scanning. I scan mostly three things. My, my kids, I make 3D portraits of my kids, and I think I mean, they exist in 3D in the real world, and it's, it's amazing. I have 3D portraits of my son when he was three days old, and I can revisit those in VR or AR. It's just amazing. Um, I scan, I like to scan vehicles in my neighborhood, and like motorbikes, and there are a lot of, I live in Brooklyn, there are a lot of very old cars that are not made anymore and I just find the fascinating objects that I want to preserve in something better than the photographies. And then I like to scan food uh, just because it's, uh, it's a cool thing. Just like on Instagram, you like to post photos of food and I think in 3D it's, uh, yeah, it's even uh, nicer. Um, I guess over the years, uh, as I've learned more and more about how to use these uh, tools, you always want better quality, and so you need to feed the, the software with more pictures, higher res pictures. And I used to only do scans with like 50 or so images, uh, and now I use typically 200, 300 images. And so it's much longer, uh, but the results are much nicer. And once you've reached a certain threshold, you want to keep pushing the bar. Um, in terms of the overall community, I think more, more and more people are hearing and discovering about photogrammetry, and just for Sketchfab, is a sh sheer volume of content coming from those workflows. They realize it's available today, it's possible today, it's available to anyone, it's easy to use, and uh, you might as well just get started. Uh, there are more and more uh, new photogrammetry software on the market. Um, I think traditional 3D people are also realizing it, it, it's good for them, not hurting them, you know, just like traditional photographers can use Photoshop to be better photographers. Traditional 3D artists can use uh, 3D scans to uh, work faster or like uh, get references and, and stuff like that. And then the other big trend is of course around uh, real-time 3D capture coming to our smartphones. Latest iPhones all have a depth sensor. 
Uh, and so that's what Scandi is built upon, uh, which means anyone with an iPhone X has uh, a native built-in 3D camera in their pocket. It hasn't been really um, uh, exposed by Apple that much because today they only use it uh, for like the face and looking and stuff like that. And it's only front facing, and, and so of course to do good free capture, we, we want it uh, back facing as well. Yeah. But it's coming from their acquisition of PrimeSense back in 2013. Uh, they were the makers of the Kinect, and so they've spent the past uh, six years bringing this tech into the iPhone. And next step is uh, easy free capture for anyone, and then uh, to unlock a lot, a lot of amazing workflows, digitize the real world, publish it on the web on Sketchfabs, and consume it uh, in AR in a completely different part of the world. Yeah, I hear we're gonna get a back-facing 3D scanner this year yeah, um, I've... on the phone, and then when the 5G iPhone comes out next year, we're gonna get a whole bunch of new things, including, a, 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 I'm hearing that the glasses are gonna come next year, but we might not be able to buy them until 2021, but they'll announce them with the 5G iPhone is what I'm hearing, but which makes sense, right? Yeah. 5G brings us all sorts of new capabilities, but these sensors are becoming key and Scandi, you use Scandi on your, how do you scan your bikes? Because you do beautiful scans. Yeah, so I mostly use photogrammetry because as I mentioned, once, once you reach a certain quality level, you want to stay at that level. I use yeah. Scandi, so we're native, Sketchfab is natively integrated with Scandi. So when you uh, create, uh, I can show you actually, uh, when you create a scan uh, with Scandi, uh, where is my Scandi? Yeah. Sorry, there we go. Um, when you create a scan with Scandi, so this is my uh, daughter, for example, um, and then there is a, a Sketchfab icon, and then in one click I can put my title description, and then uh, I can <coughs> upload to Sketchfab, uh, title, and then within, you know, like, so to scan, seconds. to scan your baby, you just hold it uh, around yeah. here and scan it like this, right? Uh, yeah, um, and it takes a few seconds and then generates a pretty file and then you can upload it. When you do the session. photogrammetry one, how do you, how do, you do that? Because people, uh, I know there's a few people who understand what photogrammetry <laughs> is, but most of my uh, audience probably has never done a photogrammetry scan. So, uh, so explain photo the process. Yeah, so photogrammetry is just taking a lot of pictures around an object at different levels and so typically uh, check, 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 check all around at one level and then another one at higher level and then another one at a lower level. Uh, you don't need, you could do with just 10 pictures, but of course the more pictures the better the results. And then photogrammetry is just uh, the process of stitching those images together. And what tool do you use? I mostly use uh, Metashape by Agisoft, which is one of the few professional uh, photogrammetry software av available for Mac. And how much does that cost? Do you remember? I have no idea. I think yeah. was there ever I think they have a standard edition, which is like below 200 bucks, and then the professional edition is like 1,000. Okay. Uh, and then I also just started uh, doing drone photogrammetry, which is really cool, which is what same process, but taking photos with a drone, which means you can fly your drone over a building and then uh, just generate a ton of pictures and then stitch, stitch them together to recreate that in 3D. That's cool. That's cool, a lot of fun. And I'm noticing there's a lot more people who are learning these techniques and playing with them and capturing different things and a friend of mine who's really advanced photographer is taking that and putting that into an AI and teaching the AI how to how to build generative generate new buildings or new cities mm -hmm. out of the scans he's built right because he's built so many scans he's captured yeah, so many scans yeah we're seeing more and more people doing like machine learning around our content we're the largest data set of virtual things like we're the largest data set of the hydrants, for example. So if you want to teach uh, an autonomous car what is an hydrant uh, on the road, like where, where's the best way to, to do that? Uh, I remember when the first, so now we have a marketplace to sell, where you can buy and sell the assets. And the first item I sold from my 3D scan collection was a, a 3D scan of a chocolate croissant, pain au chocolat, which I put on sale for uh, uh, $3.99, which is pretty much the price of the actual thing, I wasn't really expecting it to sell, and then someone uh, uh, bought it within a few days, and I looked at his website to understand why would he buy this thing, and he's doing a, a, f a food app that gives like nutrition advice on food items, uh, and so to do that, he needs to teach the app uh, about a lot of 
uh, food plates and ingredients, and so he's buying a lot of food on Sketchfab to be able to automatically recognize what is a chocolate croissant. This is one of the thesis of my book, is uh, uh, augmented reality is going to bring many new kinds of jobs, and that sounds like a new kind of job to me, right? Scanning food in for 3D yeah. for training in AI, what 3D, what food actually looks like, right? Yeah, I mean, there are so many things we, we, we can't even uh, foresee, but yeah, we know, there's this other company in New York, they are working with a lot of restaurants, so they digitize all their uh, food items from their menu, and then uh, they just did a deal with um, uh, the burger, um, Bear Burger, uh, where you can see your burger in AR before, during, uh, from their app. What are you seeing happening in education? That, I'm seeing quite a few teachers using 3D yeah, uh, so objects on merge yeah. cubes and other things to... Yeah, I guess well, on, on our end, we're uh, using more and more like learning management systems in schools. Um, I mean, again, we're the largest data sets of uh, Parts of, of the body, of you know, like dinosaurs or current animals, and anything really, um, and yeah, we see uh, people building curriculums around that. Uh, we have a ton of museums on the platform, like almost a thousand museums, uh, from the Louvre to the British Museum to the Met, and again, amazing uh, learning material. Those museums always try to um, enrich the content with like 3D annotations and audio and things like that to really uh, document the 3D assets. And it's been a, a great resource for a lot of people. Yeah. Back to the AI, because I have a feeling you're thinking about this. Um, you know, Autodesk showed me you can put two buildings in and then generate a thousand buildings in between those buildings or even some ones that didn't exist in between those buildings. Are you thinking about how to use AI to train the system on new things and maybe be able to generate new kinds of objects from mm. the AI that would learn? I wish I could say yes, but to be honest, I mean, we're, we're a, a tiny team, we're 30 people, yeah. uh, and our plate is completely full with all the, all the work around our, our web-based renderer and making sure it, it's the best on the market. and so. Everything you can do with the assets themselves, we our goal is to, to keep it. Uh, same thing with capture. Like we're not really investing on capture because so many people are, and are are packed and our 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 yeah our our promise is to to partner with all the ways to create content and, and be their best partner in terms of publishing, and then partner with all the ways all the places to, to consume content and be the, the best source of content. And we, if we start like marching on, on either of those two sides. I mean, uh, we'll do a shittier jobs than the others who are only doing that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, our, our goal is really to be a central hub and let, let content be created somewhere, let content be consumed somewhere else, and then uh, just, just be the, the home yeah. on the internet. Uh, on Friday, I'm going to Betaworks to see uh, synthetic characters, right? They're starting to create singers that are completely AI generated they they look like a human, but mm. they are not human at all, right? Are you thinking about where th that world might go and and how they might um, store their uh, their personalities or their or even their polygons in, in Sketchfab and share them with other people? Or yeah, I mean, I I guess I am a bit. Um, my angle has has been more around. I can see a future where we all have our 3D portraits stored on a platform like Sketchfab and, and over time, and so over time you can see a 3D U uh, from like birth to death essentially and, and how it evolves and, and learn a ton of things uh, around this. I think what well, this is more interesting for me and has more use cases and like what is the, the, the virtual beings is um, well, I guess yeah, it's different. Uh, we're seeing some of those trends with the face filters in AR, like in Snap and Facebook. And so, of course, it gives uh, new ideas when, when you see those use cases getting a lot of traction. Uh, but on Sketchfab itself, we, we have so many like free portraits and free captures of actual humans showing up that also gives a lot of ideas around that. Yeah, like deep, deep fakes are one thing that I'm noticing. I mean, the Dali Museum, uh, ingested all the videos that Dolly had recorded over the years of himself 
or other people, right, speaking at conferences or talking to the media, and then they train an AI to be a virtual Dali, and when you go in the museum, a virtual Dali is talking to you, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see that kind of stuff being stored in Sketchfab in the future? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're definitely the, I don't know if it's gonna be used for, well, I guess it is gonna be used for uh, uh, fake features. news and stuff. Yeah. Um, because if you have a 3D model of somebody, yeah. you can make them or, say yeah. anything or do anything. Or I have, I have uh, we released animation support maybe three or four years ago. So you can upload an animated file. And the day we announced it, I published an animation of a 3D scan of myself, which I rigged yeah, using mix ammo, uh, dancing like Gangnam Style, like that. It's an entirely <laughs> computer generated. And this got a, a ton of views. And a lot of people still think that I was actually Re dancing. Like recorded dancing this way, like in, in volumetric video. Like, no, this, is, this was just rigged. In, in no way I'm able to dance this well. I mean, uh, so yeah, that was fun. Yeah. So you're seeing a lot of people play with animation techniques and, and playing with AI and playing with yeah. feeding these things and, also and making them animated different ways. Yeah, and seeing new tools, uh, you know, like Radical, that is able to extract. Um, it's a motion from a 2D video, like you dance in front of a 2D video, and it's able to extract 3D motion from the videos that you can rig your 3D character. Yeah, we're seeing that on Friday. And yeah, it's really uh, interesting. In fact, we put a, we're putting up a yeah, video yeah. of Radical. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. Cool. Yeah. It'll all get confused if I start talking about timelines, because this <laughs> video will be up in a week. But <laughs> but we have a video up on, of Radical, cool. and um, that's pretty amazing technology, mm -hmm. right? And so we're going to be able to train our Sketchfab polygons yeah, yeah, yeah. to do all sorts of crazy yeah, stuff, yeah. right? And I have it in two ways, like publish from Radical to Sketchfab and then import meshes into Radical. Uh, yeah. yeah. How many different viewers do you have to make now? And do you see that number going, keep going in terms up? Of, what do you mean? Well, like, uh, I just got an Oculus Quest and there's a browser Random. there. Out of the it. box, same viewer, so. It's same viewer? Yeah. And we, you we can just... get, you know, Firefox that plays VR and I got, yeah. You know, I mean, the, Apple has, you the, know, certain things and Facebook well, so, has certain so things. So we have just one viewer and, and, the, and that's the, one of the perks of the web and, and well, like, at least the goal is that it's gonna run everywhere to be entirely cross-platform, initially just for 3D, but eventually also for VR and AR. And so with WebVR, but now evolving to the web, uh, WebXR uh, specs, the same Sketchfab URL is gonna run across all devices. And so I got my quest a bit early, of course, and you know, Sketchfab worked out of the box. The, the one, well, the, there are some custom things we have to do. The, the first one is typically the, um, the controllers because all the headsets have their own controllers. And so we need, uh, we need to be able to recognize each device to show you the actual controllers you have in your hands. Uh, and so that's one custom thing. And then they don't all have uh, the same uh, uh, power. So typically the Quest is more of a mobile uh, device. And right now, uh, yeah, we have some work to do to optimize the performances for each device. We already do a lot of this optimization. Typically when you upload a, a model uh, we automatically generate a number of texture resolutions, and depending on the hardware you're using, we're going to show you like a lower resolution on mobile, higher resolution on desktop, and then yet another resolution on VR. And then we eventually want to do the same thing with the geometry, and so automatically adapt the geometry level to the hardware you're using. But that's interesting because as 5G comes along, we're going to be able to view very high resolution or uh, high polygon count yeah. models, right? And if I'm still on 3G or 4G, um, yeah, or on, down, on yeah. a bad Wi-Fi link or something, all of a sudden I have to take fewer polygon models in my uh, glasses of the future. And you guys are thinking through that, yeah. like how to deliver a good experience no matter where it is. Yeah, it's already in the works, and yeah, the goal is to target to be able to automatically target for each platform to automatically identify the platform, and we also have ways to, to bypass this, just like on YouTube, you can move from uh, low resolution to higher uh, resolution. Yeah. Are you, um, you, you mostly are staying focused on being the database of, the, uh, of this new 3D web. You, are you gonna start thinking about tools at all to make the polygons do fun things, or? Yeah, I mean, we're uh, not I'm mostly focused on being the database. We're initially mostly focused on being the the best web-based renderer yeah. and 
and one of the byproducts of that is becoming <laughs> the largest <laughs> database, but, but it, it's, it's a byproduct. Um, and so we invest a lot in terms of like on rendering and performances, loading speed and so on. And so we're gonna keep adding new material supports and, and so on. And then what's interesting with all the new viewers and all the new formats, you know, like USDC and GLTF and GLB and so on, is that uh, in order to build Sketchfab, we've already done a ton of work, uh, op like uh, unif unification work. We support more than 50 free file formats. And then we, we've, we've spent seven years building our own converter, so we convert all those files into our own format, which is optimized for the web. And now we're able to convert back to GLTF. And so a lot of people are already using us just for this, this bit of code, which is a transcoding pipeline. And again, it's, it's a byproduct that now we have and we could license it as a standalone product. We haven't really um, uh, built it into a standalone product yet, but we have a lot of requests from the lar large organizations. Uh, typically, all the places where you can upload a file, they only support one format. But with our pipeline, they could add the 50 formats we support then just use our, our transcoding service. And it's, it's interesting because the same things happened in the video world. Yeah. And, and now we're, as a byproduct, we have this product uh, for, the, for the 3D world. And then we also have a pretty robust uh, offering tool that people never see. If you're not using Sketchfab, you can't really know about it. Uh, but uh, we have an editing layer where you can add 3D annotations, spatial audio. You can define uh, your VR scenes, so like set up to scale and so on. And then we have a ton of uh, post-process effects, so really like almost like Instagram for the 3D world, where you can add uh, sharpness, saturation, uh, depth of field. So we have, we have automated like well, fake depth of field. It's really nice. Uh, you can add uh, uh, a virtual uh, ground and drop a shadow on it to like stage the model yeah. and like a ton of stuff uh, that you can do with yeah, Sketchfab. Yeah. yeah, more coming, I bet. Too. Yeah, but as you guys come up yeah. with new ideas. What, you know, what would you uh, tell the industry right now that, that you're seeing or that they should be thinking about or, um, you know, at, as this world goes more and more 3D every, every month, right? Uh, well, I, yeah. I talk a lot about uh, uh, <laughs> photogrammetry, obviously, because it's like a logging way uh, to, to create content. And yeah. then I also, I also say, um, I also keep reminding people that 3D on the web uh, offers more reach than pure VR or pure AR, and so for like brands they want to jump in on like on like the 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 most futuristic experience, but as a result they're gonna build very like custom standalone stuff that are gonna require like to download an app or to have a headset or whatever. I think it's great, but I think step one should should be like 3D on the web, which is like 100% reach. <laughs> And then if you want to add on top of that VR, AR, uh, which you can do with the assets you've, you've made for any web-based free experience, yeah. uh, you can and you should. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the order of things that makes sense to me. Yeah, um, if you walk in a shopping mall, you're not gonna load an app for the shopping mall, yeah. in the, except in weird situations. But web AR, you st start up a, a AR app and yep. start going around the mall and interacting with 3D objects, right? Yep, yep. Well, cool. What else is going on here? The, the, uh, well, I mean, you're hiring? Are you raising new funds? Are you, uh, what's the business like? No, I mean, we're mostly, like? so we spend, we spend the first six years yeah, of the company uh, mostly focusing on A, building the, the best product, like the best 3D player on the market, and B, reaching critical mass of uh, content creators and content. And over the past years, over the past years, maybe the past 18, 18 months, we've seen more and more companies adopting the platform. And so now we're kind of doubling down on that in order to build the business. Uh, and so exposing more features for companies, typically uh, uh, refining our viewer API to build very advanced things on top of Sketchfab, like product configurators, uh, so that you can uh, load a boat and pick your color uh, and your seating option and all that. So we're seeing uh, really great traction around this more uh, commercial application, and so we keep uh, investing on that. Uh, and then now that we have a ton of content, we spend a lot of uh, the past making sure all content created would be published on Sketchfab, and now that it's there, we're looking at 
at step two, which is distributing that content. Uh, and so we released our download API a year ago, which is what uh, Facebook integration is about. So you can search Sketchfab uh, from uh, there, but also from Unity, Unreal, um, Torch, many other uh, AR and VR applications. And then we released our store, which is a marketplace where you can buy and sell assets. Uh, and again, like uh, until very recently, we're only uh, uh, working on making sure content would land on Sketchfab. And so it's, it's fairly new that we're looking at uh, this, this second part of using uh, Sketchfab assets outside of Sketchfab. And so yeah, our main focus is uh, right. we're still building the, the best 3D player, which serves both the creators and, and the businesses, uh, extending uh, the feature sets for APIs, either upload API or viewer API. And then uh, building new integrations on the consumption side so we can uh, search Sketchfab uh, in other applications. Very cool. Well, thanks so much for spending some time with me. You're welcome. We love Sketchfab. Marcelo was excited to come here and see yeah. Sketchfab. You use Sketchfab, right? I do. I do use it. And it's pretty cool, you know, the way that you guys integrate with other apps, right? Like, I use a, an app called Lotus. Lotus? Yeah, for presentations. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to read it there. Yeah, yeah they let you integrate cool. your models yeah. like, really quickly, right? Yeah, it's really nice. Just yeah, do just one basically your presentation, right? And you can interact with them. That's a really powerful thing. I think integrations is, is, is key, and Sketchfab is, is great for that. You know, yeah. 3D visualization for video games, like I'm seeing. We, we, we created video games back in the day too, right? And having characters that you can get on Sketchfab and then you can buy them out. And I wanted to ask you about that because, you know, there's people that gave them for free, there's people that charge for the models, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about Netflix? business model in a way. Yes. Right. <laughs> I, I'm talking about video game developers. Yeah. We use a lot of models, right? And they, yeah, you can have like yeah. a monthly fee. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's going to be all sorts of memes that are going right. to get created. If, if with your content is key. How many, how many different objects are in SketchUp? Three million. Three million yeah. objects, right? So yeah, imagine you're creating an animated film or something, yeah. Yeah, something some new, yeah. it's not even film. We can't even think about old terms. Right. We have to think about we're building yeah. an immersive environment right. that we interact with robot rolling around here, that's right? The thing. And, and that's why I'm asking you, the Netflix model. Yeah, eventually I mean, we, like, we'd want to have a subscription offering as well. Uh, but yet another thing to build. <laughs> yeah. I would, we're, we're making three different things. One is like the platform for content creators. Yeah. One is like... Uh, technology SaaS solution for businesses and then one is a marketplace and those three things could be three separate companies all requiring like a team of 30 people <laughs> who are doing all that uh, at once um, and so yeah typically we would like to do many more stuff in the store uh, it's mostly been a lack of bandwidth um, right. but yeah, maybe steps no I get it I get it but this is great you know I really like the detail on the models like but you can tell. It's interesting because a lot of people are impressed by the quality of the content, but we have quality content only, be, well, not only, but it's because we have a, a quality viewer and you yeah. know, over the years, like at the beginning, uh, great artists wouldn't want to put their content on Sketchfab because our renderer wouldn't do justice to their work. And they were like, I'm only gonna put my stuff here if it looks as good as inside 3ds Max. And so, so like a lot of other companies are building viewers and and platforms, and they don't understand what's the secret sauce to, to get great content. Well, right. get, get a great render, and then uh, be good at integrations. Uh, you make the workflow seamless uh, for the creators.